And I'm very pleased to introduce Win Yang, who's the Senior Executive General Manager Content at STLM Skynet. So perhaps just give us a bit of an overview if you can, Win. Uh, just give us an overview of Skynet. What's the philosophy and, and when did Skynet get started? Well, uh, Skynet is a pay TV operator in Myanmar. Uh, we started out our service in 2010. Uh, about December. So we are almost uh, at the about three year anniversary right now. So when we started out, uh, we would like the Skynet to be the, the, the pay TV operator, which is as uh, comparable uh, to our other regional pay TV operator, such as like Thailand has a lot of good uh, pay TV operator. Uh, Vietnam does has the uh, international level pay TV operator, so is the Malaysia, Singapore, and so on and so forth. So in Myanmar at the time, the, there is no international level uh, pay TV broadcaster, and what we had, uh, the people we had is uh, other uh, pirate signal from other countries, which is coming to our country, and it was there. So, uh, so our aim is to have the, a, a true Myanmar TV operator, which is, which is good for Myanmar people. And can you give us some sort of sense, we've obviously had a number of sessions talking about the various types of content. Can you give us some sort of sense of what the popular pieces of content are in Myanmar? Well, uh, for Myanmar, the, as, uh, there is, when we come into the market, there is not much of the, any dominant player in the market. So it was very difficult for us to find out what would uh, Myanmar people really want. But um, what we approached is that our, we, we were thinking if uh, typically the, the people are people, it's everywhere there is uh, going to be um, there's going to be uh, different people will have different preference. So, but all in all, I, what we, we also think is that uh, sports being the, the live sports event is uh, the very important factor for us. Uh, movies, news, followed by the documentary is a, a other area that is very important for, uh, very uh, preferable contents for, for Myanmar. <laughs> And what kind of sport? What's the popular one? Well, in, in sports area, the football is really the, the most popular in Myanmar and because uh, being, uh, the country has been very rooted back over well over 50 years playing football and uh, Myanmar was also the, one of the uh, leading football um, players, uh, football player uh, country in the Asia at the time and football is really a popular sport in Myanmar. So um, still is the, the most popular choice of all people. And we've heard as well about taking you know, some global content uh, and localizing it. What sort of localizing do you have to do with the content you're buying? Well, um, we try to uh, localize. Uh, this is the area that we try to expand. When we talk about localization, there will be two different areas of localization. One is the, the one that we, uh, uh, international contents that we buy, either the, the 24 hour channels or uh, uh, this program. We try to localize either by dubbing or subtitling. And uh, subtitling is the, the way of choice at the moment because uh, two reasons. One is the, one is the, we do not have the very good capacity to do the dubbing at the moment. And also, we do not want to lose the, the original uh, taste of the, if we, if the properly, if it is the content is not properly dubbed, uh, it would lose out all the, 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 the greatness. So, Subtitling is the one that we are doing right now. And also, in terms of localization, another area that we're looking at is that uh, we try to partner with the uh, channel content provider, making it localized contents from Myanmar as well. Okay. So are you producing anything as yourself? Are you producing any, or are you mainly buying? Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, yes and no. Uh, in terms of we producing, yes, we are, we are producing for our own in-house channels at the moment. I should give you a little bit brief uh, introduction of our country, our platform, a little bit more detail as well. Um, Myanmar has, uh, as a country, it's about a total of 60 million people in, in there. Of that, about almost 8 to 10 million uh, household, and about 80% of that is a TV household. So we have about, about five to six million TV household in there, and, and, of, uh, uh, and uh, five, to six, five to six million TV household. And that, uh, the, in Myanmar, there's a, a young girl is uh, a vast majority of people live, uh, a vast, about 10% of people live there, and then uh, the second largest city is called Mandalay, which is about, uh, about, I would say, about 5% of people live in Yatmanli. So all in all, these uh, two big cities has a large market area. And our platform at the moment, when we started out, we started about 30-something about channels, uh, some of our in-house channels, some international channels. Uh, we started out with 30, uh, 36 or 38 channels. We started out three years back. And then we grew our platform in um, different journals. Uh, including international as well as our in-house challenge offering. For example, we increase our, uh, uh, at the moment we have about 104 channels in total. Of that, 26 of that is the, 26 of that is our local uh, uh, Skynet program <laughs> channels. And two of that is the uh, high definition channels. And from, from international, uh, there's about 70 international channels that we, we rebroadcast those. So uh, when we go back to your uh, previous question, when we talk about the uh, localization, we try to localize by, localize the channels by sub subtitling of these channels. And also, when we also talk about, uh, briefly talk about the localization of channel, we are thinking about partnering with some of the channels provider to make the Myanmar channels for that channel, uh, for that, from that channel, uh, channel provider. So when we talk about the, uh, whether we have our own uh, productions area, yeah, we do have our own productions, which is we produce for our in-house channels, as well as we try to do the, the we try to partner with the international channels provider, which, uh, and then we make it localized contest for that. Okay. And are you doing anything innovative or new in the packaging and bundling in order to drive subscription growth? Yes, uh, uh, we had, uh, when we first launched the service, uh, we, what we have is that we, uh, we have all in one platform, one single platform. Uh, there's two reasons we do that. One is that is, uh, we do not have that many channels at the time. Two, uh, People are not familiar with the pay TV market at the time, that they do not know how to choose the packages. So if we were to offer us too many packages at the time, people will be confused and do they, do not, they wouldn't know how to pick the, ch the right packages. So we just uh, put up everything in one, all in one package. But back in this year, uh, August 1st of this year, we started to separate the package right now. Uh, we have, uh, what had what we had at the time when we uh, started to do the uh, packages, uh, we have about 70 plus channels at the time. So all these 70, about 72 channels, is becoming like a, 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 a original package. So we carry on as as it is called. We call it uh, Skynet package number two, and we also uh, started offering the smaller package which is only about 20 something channels in there. Uh, and that is, we call it Skynet SN1, which is stand for Skynet 1 packages. And also we started to add a few more contents after that on, since August 1st. Uh, those are all becoming like uh, the, the new oil one package, which is currently have 104 channels. We call it SN3 channels. The reason we do that is that um, we try to uh, also, of course, the parent either SN1, SN2, or SN3 will have different prices, and we try to uh, 
have, we try to go uh, for, especially for SM1, we try to have, go for the some people who would not want to spend too much money on the pay TV. Right. And so to bring them in and over time? Over time, yes. Grow them right. up. Yep. So we have, the, uh, we are hoping that people are getting uh, more awareness of how cheaply they can buy our service. Uh, for example, SN2 service, we are selling for about $3 a month. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you, we had a chance to talk earlier on and you explained uh, a rather unusual situation you have in the sort of piracy uh, area. Can you share a bit more around that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, our country is a, a unique country. It's, even though it's quite sizable size, uh, as well as uh, quite an, uh, about 60 million people in there, there is no uh, dominant pay TV pro uh, provider before. Uh, so, so there is no, um, how do you say, the, the countrywide signal coverage in Myanmar as well from television. So other satellite, uh, our country is also neighbor by China, India, Thailand. These all are very, has a very mature market in, in terms of pay TV market. And our, uh, all these satellite pay TV operator signal is available in my country, and when it is not properly encrypted, or when it is not properly being distributed, um, it's all coming to my country. So for example, from India, uh, Tata Sky signal and Airtel signal is very readily available in my country. It's been available, way, I would say, more than 10 years already. And people, has, people are using that signal for long time already. And also from the Thailand, uh, True Vision Signal, as, w uh, as well as some of the uh, Grammy Signal is there as well. And from uh, nowadays from CTH as well. And then also from Vietnam, uh, K Plus Signal is uh, there as well. So, uh, but at the moment, the worst of all is India Tata Sky Signal, hmm. which they sell fairly cheaply, and they are not uh, even though they are illegal signal, they are not exactly a pirate box. They are actually the uh, a real Tata Sky box. Uh, so the people can get the Tata Sky box very cheaply, and also the subscription. The way they operate is that uh, they are they are they go for even though they are pay TV operator, they go for the the, the sponsor driven model. So they uh, they can sell very cheaply for subscription. I think the for in my country their their the monthly subscription fee is about 300 rupees. You can get uh, the most uh, uh, you can get like a Premier League uh, sports contest in there. So that's translated back to about about four to five dollar a month. Okay. And which people can watch the uh, Premier League football for that that price. And obviously, Myanmar is opening up and it's, it's changing quite a lot. What are some of the obstacles you're facing as you try and grow the business? That is uh, one of the biggest issues for us, the, the illegal signal or pirate signal from other countries mm. is one of the biggest challenge that we are facing right now. Uh, for us, the, our current subscriber base is not as large compared to near neighboring country so we can we cannot compete by price uh, for for them is essentially these are uh, they do not have to pay the extra rights for extra rights fee for this market and but the, their their exposure is already there so for us it's very difficult for us to buy the contents legally and then uh, we do not have that many subscriber base so that is it's a big challenge for us and I guess the other thing, I've got a bit of a telco background, so again, I understand that the telco market is beginning to open up, the licenses have done. What's the infrastructure like for you to be able to tap into some of this interaction that we've heard about today? Our um, tele, uh, telco, in, uh, we have the in, in, in telecommunication area in Myanmar, is, the infrastructure is very uh, primitive, I would say. Uh, it's so... Uh, Mo even the mobile phone usage is compared to other regional countries uh, is far less usage, uh, the, the usage ratio. 
So we have, even though we have over 60 million people, I think so far we are less than one million people has been using mobile phone at the moment. And on top of that, uh, in terms of mobile phone usage, the, the, the 3G network, 4G network is, well, uh, is, we have, they, they call it 3G network is there, but it's, the, it's not really a 3G, but uh, in terms of when you try to access to that, uh, internet uh, download speed is very slow over there. So for television, uh, showing the video, streaming or anything over the 3G or 4G network is not, at the moment, is not currently available. But uh, there is a possibility that uh, telecommunication uh, companies, Indonesian uh, big companies are having a license to operate in Myanmar. Recently, two big Indonesian tele teleco company has a license to operate. Uh, they just got a issue, uh, license issue. One is called Telenor and one is called Oridu. And they are planning to build the, build the in, uh, infrastructure for 3G and 4G network. So once it's done, I think, uh, once it's all said and done, I think the country would have a very good, uh, I'm hoping that it's going to have a very good uh, 3G or 4G speed. You may be able to copy some of these ideas you've seen up here. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> that's a, something that I think we, we should be going, and I think this is a digital, uh, a, another platform that uh, uh, Myanmar also needs for that. And obviously, uh, an event like this is, is ideal to meet new partners and, and, and look at new co-productions, etc. Uh, is there anything you're in particular looking for that you'd like to uh, share with the audience? Yeah, of course, uh, definitely. We are always looking for... Uh, partnering with uh, all the, the, the right partner. I mean, the right partner, I mean, um, um, it could be from any area. Um, we, uh, the, as you can imagine, the country is not being uh, mature in that business. We, our, one other uh, significant challenge that we have is our capacity. Uh, we, in, when we try to increase our quality of productions, we have a significant challenge is that, uh, from uh, human resource and cap uh, capacity. So uh, what we try to do right now, when we try to increase the productivity, uh, production level uh, and productivity, uh, we always have that problem and we are always looking for a partner. Uh, we would like to be partner with uh, uh, the companies, I mean, there's so many of the companies which is much more mature, much more uh, knowledge than what, we, uh, what we're doing right now. So we are always looking out for these partnerships. Okay. And I guess, like in a lot of these emerging markets, are there any government regulations that people need to be aware of? Well, there was, uh, when we started out uh, three years back, there was the, a lot of challenge for us, uh, especially, um, when we first started out the business, that was 2010 of December, and when we, uh, we were the first company in Myanmar to broadcast international news live. So we were putting up, the, at the time, uh, uh, a few of the international news that we rebroadcast without any delay. And we, that was a, a that was the very risky things to do at the time, but we would like to, we would like to try the, uh, we would like to do that way because we would like to be as other regional broadcaster who has been doing that. So we were do, uh, we started out that way, and and then uh, fortunately the country is also changing, uh, and uh, the the new government at, took over in 2011 and then the, they relaxed the uh, censorship issue and nowadays we have been broadcasting everything, uh, many sp uh, news, Indonesian news channels as well as all these uh, channels uh, rebroadcasting back live, so without any delay. So at the moment, uh, the country is significantly changed. Uh, we do not have any political censorship as of today, and the only 
censorship that we need to look watch out for is that uh, sexually explicit material or things like that is not doesn't fit to our country. And another thing that we need to watch out for is uh, uh, which could insult a particular race or particular religions. That's something that we really what have to watch out for. Other than that, we do not have much to worry about these days. Okay, because I think you said you had something like 140 different sort of ethnic groups in the country. That's right. Uh, our country has about 100 and uh, about 140 ethnic people in, in my in, in my country, and um, a vast majority, of course, you can imagine, is a, a very small minority. So it's very important for us to uh, for us not to be. Um, not to insult or not to be taken advantage of being the minority. Mm -hmm. So that is a very key uh, fact for us, that not to be discriminating against, uh, that the contents of what we provide is not going to affect thing them. Sure. Well, obviously, with the, the opportunities coming up with some of the new infrastructure, obviously a lot of the new ideas you'll pick up from this conference and other things, obviously uh, we wish you all the best as you grow that market share. And thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. I, I'm, I would really like to thank you for coming to here yeah, too.